Good morning, aloha from Hawaii. I am Louise McCulloch. I'm the incoming vice chair for the International Stroke Conference, and I'm joined today by Dr. Philip Bath, who is going to take us through the very exciting results of the Right 2 trial using glycerol trinitrate ultra early for treatment of stroke. So, can you tell us a little bit about um, the purpose of the trial? And aloha to you as well. Uh, well, Right 2 had really two purposes. One was a background one, which was could we do a large ambulance trial in the National Health Service in the UK? But the scientific one was what was the safety and efficacy of glycerol trinitrate, sometimes called nitroglycerin, uh, given as a patch to patients who presented to the emergency services with a possible stroke. And the paramedics uh, assessed the uh, uh, patients in the context of the trial and if they fulfilled the inclusion criteria uh, there was consent in the ambulance, led by the paramedics, uh, and then they opened a box which contained either glycerol trinitrate or a sham patch and put that on and then took the patient as quickly as possible to hospital. Excellent. So it sounds like a very uh, elaborate trial in the pre-hospital setting that you managed to pull off, so congratulations to that. Thank Were you. there any unique um, features of the design you wanted to mention? Well. There are very few paramedic trials at the moment. Obviously, the big one here is FastMag, with, uh, led by Jeff Saver and colleagues uh, in and around Los Angeles. So we knew in theory it could be you could do a large trial. We didn't know whether the National Health Service, we were working across eight ambulance services. Paramedics, by and large, are research naive. So there was a whole issue of how do you train paramedics. We were asking them to do consent, and that contrasted yeah. with FastMag. Um, most of the patients gave consent, sometimes a family member, but uniquely the paramedics also could give consent if, if the patient had no capacity uh, and there was no family or relative or whatever around. So that was unique. Um, another unique factor is how to cope with mimics. Now, yes. I don't know how Fast Mag achieved this because they had a 4% mimic rate. We had a 26% mimic rate, oh, and if you add high, yeah. the TIA patients, then you get up to 36%. So a third of your population is not likely to respond to treatment. So you dilute out the treatment effect. So during the trial, we had to expand the trial numbers from 850. We ended up with uh, 1,149 to try and deal with that. And then another unique thing, uh, certainly unique in stroke, was we changed from a conventional analysis across the whole population to what we call a hierarchical analysis. So the first analysis is in the stroke and TIA patients, and if that's positive, you then go and look at the whole trial. So that was also unique. So yes, there were several things about this trial that were unique. Yes, <laughs> it sounds like a very well-designed trial, though, especially with the waiver of consent that the paramedics could get that consent. It wasn't Well, it wasn't, waiver. wasn't waiver. Yeah. No, 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 they were, they were full consent in the ambulance. So can you share the results of the trial? Well, like many stroke trials, it was neutral. Um, so first of all, we examined the outcome in the, uh, in the stroke and TIA patients. That was neutral there was a tendency to it being negative. Okay. So the p-value was around 0 0.08, so not very far from 0 0.5. Um, we didn't, therefore didn't have to do the whole analysis, but we did, of course, and that was more neutral, and you would expect that because of the dilution effect of adding, adding patients with stroke mimics. Uh, within the stroke population, there was um, a very strong tendency for glycerol trinitrate to um, make things worse okay. in patients with intracerebral hemorrhage. Now, we need to explore that. Um, this ha potentially has implications for other blood pressure alone trials, okay. and pa actually further than that, possibly critical care and, and management of, of uh, general bleeding. What we think, and this is speculation, but it makes sense, is when you cut yourself, the first response is for a blood vessel to tighten up, vasoconstriction. What did we give? We gave a vasodilator. We gave it very early. So within the first hour, there were definite indications that glycerol trinitrate was doing, causing harm. So we think we blocked that first natural response to a blood vessel being damaged. Um, and the result of that is that uh, the bleeds 
even though patients within cerebral hemorrhage looked as though they were bigger. So we had a shift to a worse ranking scale and larger hematoma. This is speculation as to the mechanism, but it kind of fits. Yeah, that, that make, does make sense. And that's an important side effect. Did you notice that the blood pressure systemically was lower in the patients that did poorly? Uh, we haven't answered that question. Okay. Actually, blood pressure effect of GTM was quite small. Okay. It was about 5 over 3. Um, I'm not sure I believe that, partly because pilot trials where you did very precise blood pressure measurements at rigid time points using validated equipment showed we had up to 20 millimeter drop in systolic pressure. My, my guess is if you go into the big bad world, uh, we saw this in the ENOS trial, which was 4,000 patients, we only had a 7, uh, seven millimeter drop of systolic. I think if you go into the big bad world, you've got a variety of different blood pressure machines. Many of them right. are not validated. People don't take blood pressure properly. I think it then becomes very difficult to measure accurately what the blood pressure reduction is. So we're reporting five or six millimeters systolic. My guess is it's probably more than that. Yeah, it would seem so. So what do you think is the take home message for our stroke patients and for the use of these ultra early trials for our stroke patients? Well, those are, those are two questions. Um, the take-home message for glycerol trinitrate is paramedics should not be using it in the ambulance. Okay. Um, and obviously, it would have been fantastic if the trial had been positive. Uh, the a patch costs around a dollar. Um, the promise from the pilot data was we could improve the ranking and even reduce death. And if you could do that for a dollar, that would have been amazing. That would have been. Uh, but life's not like that, so um, don't don't use glycerol trinitrate in the in the ambulance. I think we need to scan patients. We know that a lot of patient, a lot of doctors in hospital, are controlling blood pressure quite often with nitrates. So we're going to have to think about that. And I think the evidence is don't use it within the first couple of hours, and after that it's probably okay. Uh, the second part of the second part of your question really is can we do ambulance trials well yes we could do a big one in los angeles now we can do a big one in england and wales uh, they're complicated trials um, you're dealing with lots of different institutions uh, we had we trained 1500 paramedics of about 500 recruited so they are challenging you're dealing with two institutions you're dealing with an ambulance service and a hospital so you have double jeopardy so they're complicated but of course, if you want to treat very early and you don't need a CT scanner, this is the way you go. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming and sharing the results of your trial right to with us, which will be presented today at thank the plenary session. So thank you. Thank you very much.